NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. Hello, friend. Let Chuck Signs and Printing be your go-to place for all your printing and sign needs. Yes, at 33 South Jefferson Street, Chuck Signs and Printing can do almost anything. Hats, cars, keychains, whatever you need, they'll put a sign on it, do that printing for you, and it's very convenient. Right next to Pizza Man's Pizza, it's Chuck Signs and Today's program was furnished by a grant from the Beanery Depot in Delhi, featuring coffee, made-to-order subs, and snacks. The Beanery Depot in Delhi, in Mahoning Town. <laughs> to the Cedar Sports Club. Oh. And with me is our producer, Mr. Angelo Parada. And um, anyone who's been following the show the past few weeks knows that the main topic of conversation has been about the new Pitt men's basketball coach and how I think he is the best thing for Pitt and basically how Angelo thinks he's going to be a complete bust. And um, Angelo, you told me before the show started that you had some news or something about him. You want yeah. to share? Yeah. Go ahead. The new coach went out. He was he was in one of the local drug stores, and you know what he found? What? Right guard, because he stinks. He figured if he got deodorized, he'd feel better. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, Little. That was a that was a good one. So that was the big breaking news, huh? Okay. Well, hey, look. Penn State won the NIT. That which is good for them. The Dukes had a banner year. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I I can't tell you. They probably are looking forward to football season. And Pitt. Well, I, I think um, at this point, I don't know if I would say Pitt is a, a football school again. I mean, I definitely would have said that a few years ago. When After I, 0 and 17, 500 in football looks good. Well, yeah, they were 5 and 7 in football last year. Um, the two years before that, Nar Narduzzi had them at 8 and 5 for those first two seasons, which was really good, uh, especially since they had, what, four years of six and six seasons with three different head coaches. Um, but, you know, at, at this point in the game, to... At this point I, in the game, no pun intended. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was, what, 2009 when CBS Sports uh, ranked Pitt as the fourth best dual sports school in the country for both basketball and football. Now I definitely think... Wait, wait, wait. When was this? It was in 2009. So that was uh, that was almost 10 years ago, of course. Did the guy ever hear of Notre Dame? Well, they... I don't no, know. I'm if just Notre, saying. Notre Dame wasn't really a basketball power at that time. That's the only thing. They We're talking the about... No, whoa, 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 whoa. Notre Dame has made the playoffs almost every year. Well, yeah, well, but you're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. In 2009, um, Dave Wanstead had them as high as, what, number six in the AP polls. Uh, Pitt basketball was a number one overall seed. They were number one in the country. So they were measuring in terms of power. You know what I mean? So Notre Dame, while they were, you know... Playing in the Big East, the same... Places pit for basketball, yeah, and but they football. weren't at football. They're independent football. 
But they were the same Big East type of member. Well, yeah, but what were they ranked in 2009? I mean, we were talking about in terms of where they were currently. See what I'm saying? So they may have been pretty good. I mean, but a 7-6 and six Notre Dame team and a bubble Notre Dame team at that for, you know, basketball and 7-6 and six for football, that's not going to compare to where Pitt was at that time, number one in basketball and number six in the football rankings. I'm sorry, but they didn't make it to the Final Four. I also remember go. I actually remember going to Heinz Field for that game. Pitt took on Notre Dame, and Pitt did beat Notre Dame. They beat them. Well, okay. We're going off track. The, the Here, point, Pitt's opening up the schedule with Albany. Mm-hmm. Right. Albany well, plays Duquesne. Well, everyone plays. Well, everyone plays cupcake schedules at first, and then they play Penn State. Whoa! Well, he just called you lions a cupcake. <laughs> what are you doing this right now? I'm trying to get Penn State fans against me. He I, just called the lions a cupcake. Oh, oh no! You. Listen, that's oh man, you're something else. Listen, Penn Penn State right now. They're another, I would say, a, a dual sport school almost because they won the NIT and they what won 11 games last year in football. So, they're overall they're doing really well too. Obviously, especially considering that uh, that you know the scandal from 2011, which is not I'm going to go into, but it's crazy because Pitt is going to have to compete against that Penn State brand in football. Now, Pitt's always going to have like this not at Penn State's level kind of. Pitt Complex brings that football. on himself. Let, 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 let's let's look at this. Pitt brings it on himself, on themselves. They had an excellent chance last year, after winning games, to advance. All they had to do was bring their game up against Penn State, and they didn't do it. They're going to go Albany, Penn State. Now, they better bury Albany. So they look really good when they play the Lions. Then they have Georgia Tech. They go at North Carolina, at the Bulls of Central Florida, come back against Syracuse, who really, Syracuse is like, uh, they kind of stink, okay? Then you're going to go at Notre Dame. If you come out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After the Notre Dame game, if you could come out of the Notre Dame game with a loss to Notre Dame and avoid a loss to Central Florida, you're going to look really good. Right. Okay. But here's what Pitt will do. They'll lose to Central Florida, and then they'll, they'll play Duke, which could be a loss, Okay, then they'll go at Virginia, at Virginia Tech, at Wake Forest, and at Miami. Well, Virginia Tech is home, excuse me. And all I'm saying is, don't lose the teams you shouldn't lose to. Well, my whole thing is, listen, if we're talking about Jeff Cable being, being able to turn around that, this pit team, it's not going to happen next year. Now, with that being said, after going 8-24 and, and 0-19 and in the conference... They're probably going to be at least a little better, just because it's so hard to be any worse. Um, now the thing, the thing is, Angelo, this is he's going to be a new coach with his new squad. He's getting a couple people back, but uh, one of the best players, Parker Stewart, said he's transferring from Pitt. They gave him a seven-year extension for a reason. That's going to be a or a seven-year contract for a reason. That's going to be a long long rebuilding process for them all right but if anyone could do it Jeff Capel can if he doesn't take the if he doesn't end up something somehow becoming the next Duke head now, coach no let's take a look aren't we doing for a break with our sponsors first we want to give them a shout out yeah we better give them so, a shout out yeah so but this might be uh, this also a little bit turn on my end because I knew you were setting me up for something good there <laughs> but we'll we'll pick up next segment now a word from our sponsors Sylvan Heights Golf Course in Newcastle Pennsylvania features many amenities 
lush fairways, and great greens. And many challenging shots. Your crowd will applaud. A short drive from Butler, Sharon, Pittsburgh, Elwood, and Youngstown. It's Sylvan Heights Golf Course in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Hey, Angelo Parada here for Croakers, Kegs, and Corks. And if that's not a mouthful, nothing is. But when you need a mouthful of that special brew, it's Croakers, Kegs, and Corks. You know, nothing tastes better than when you make it yourself. And I do some of that brew myself quite often. I like doing it. It's a great hobby, and it's something you can do. Croakers, Kids, and Quartz Low Creek Cated right in Union Township. Give them a try. This program furnished by the Mad Unit. Mobile Auto Detailing. See Michael Sad at themadunit.com. Funding provided by Main Street Clothiers and Tailors, Washington Street, Newcastle. Welcome back to the City of Sports Corner, everybody. Um, now, as I was saying, as you were saying, now here's the difference. Notre Dame opening up with Michigan next year. Okay. Okay. Not Albany. Listen, Angela, Okay, no, wait, wait, wait. You're acting like Pitt never opened up at the big game before. Now, they're playing Ball State, which is a mid-American, not a mid-major. And then they go Vanderbilt, Wake Forest, Stanford, Virginia Tech, Pitt. Okay, well, what point? Now, I, I'm going to even give you something here. I'm going to give you, I'm you ready for a give me? This may be the easiest Notre Dame schedule in the history of Notre Dame schedules. Because after they play Michigan, Ball State, nothing. Vanderbilt, nothing. Wake Forest, Demon Deacons have had a decent, they're a C. C minus. Stanford, who always gives Notre Dame a trouble, but that's going to be at South Bend. At Virginia Tech, don't see that as a problem. Then they play Pitt, Navy, and Northwestern before they finish the end of the year with Florida State, Syracuse, and USC. So they could potentially get to the Northwestern game and be undefeated. Have to beat Florida State and beat Syracuse. The Notre Dame-USC game. Do you know about the Notre Dame-USC game? It's a, it's a big rivalry. It has determined the national title more than any other game in the nation. There. Little, little helpful hint for you. Oh, yeah. I, be yeah, I believe it. You know, uh, it'd be nice if Notre Dame would get back in the national title picture. I mean, what was it, 2012 the last time well, they we were... were in the national title picture last week, last year, until two games before the end of the season. Well, I, 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 they need to get there, though. For Notre Dame having, for Notre Dame being Notre Dame, I just feel like they should still be getting the majority of the top recruits of the country. I'll tell you what, James Franklin at Penn State... He is recruiting great. They have a number, what, the number four overall recruiting class of the country right now. And even when he was going six and six his first two years, he was still recruiting great. And even with that scandal Penn State had, they're still recruiting great. It's, I think it's honestly the power of a brand. If you have the power of a brand plus an energetic coach like a James Franklin. But he changed his name. All right, I'll go with that. What did he change his name to? Ben. He needed to be more brandy. I don't. Ben wait, what? Franklin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pennsylvania's Ben Franklin. Yes. yes. You want to be able to come in and say that? Yes. yes. Now, the Pens. They're on the ice tonight. 
They are, and we said in our la we said last uh, show how right now they're the kings of Pittsburgh, back to back Stanley Cup champions. They're they're just it all was right in the hockey world. Three for the cup. They go get. Ahead. I, I listen. They, I, I'm go ahead. Go ahead. They got to take on the Flyers. I see them beating the Flyers. Okay. Okay. The nemesis that I've always seen has been the Washington Capitals. Yeah, I mean that that's I, I think hockey's great when, you know, a vetch get across be at the limelight. You know, honestly I think it might be better for hockey and I don't know if I could ever actually support this, but actually probably would be better for the NHL in general. If a Vetchkin actually did win a couple Stanley Cups or at least one to kind of put him back on the same level as Crosby in terms of like being the face of the NHL. Now you're cheering for the other team. No, no, I said I couldn't do it. I'm just saying it'd be good for the NHL. I remember in 2009, before the Pens won their first cup with Crosby, it was who's better, Ovechkin and Crosby, Ovechkin and Crosby. There was so much hate and you know animosity, and and now obviously ten year, almost ten years later, Crosby, three Stanley Cups later, Ovechkin none. It's like not even in the same discussion anymore. It's well known that Crosby is the face of the NHL. And everyone else is just down here. He's Sidney Crosby. I'm saying it'd be better. Competition's always good. Competition brings out the best in people. It brings the best out in teams. It brings the best out in, you know, the fans. It's 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 hard for me because I don't want Ovechkin to win anything. Because I, I really don't like him. I think he's a terrible person. Yeah. Well, What's I mean, that, that might be you? overstated. He's a, he, he's, Why you look so sad? He's a shady boy. You're player. for a Vetchkin. Don't you think I'm glad? Oh, what geez. the heck? No, I'm not for a Vetchkin. I'm just saying it would be good for the NHL if he, if the Capitals actually wouldn't always be this, you know, bust team when it comes to the playoffs. What are the President Trophy's champions? This has been too much of a Capital idea. Oh, that's uh, good you know why? I, I, you got puns for days. Let's go, pens. Let's go, pens. And with that, we're going to take a break and now work from our sponsors. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed our first two segments, and I hope you all enjoyed Angelo's puns. <laughs> and I, you know, I wonder how many people come in just to uh, you know, view our show just to hear your puns. Uh, can the camera see your smirk, or is it always is it just me and my <laughs> big ugly mug on? Uh, hey, because like it's like the it's like the tool time. You know how. Yeah. You know, Wilson or whoever was above the fence, you know, a little smile. That's how you are, like, with me sitting from here. We need to make it so, like, everyone can see what I deal with. You, yeah. you, you know, I got to tell you something. Oh, boy. Now, I'm looking at the NBA. And it's not bad, actually, because Boston... And the 76ers are both ahead of wow, wow. I'm King James and I'm in Cleveland and I can't win a game. Oh my goodness. I think they're I think they're gonna win it all. He's got I'm number four. I'm number four. Oh my goodness. Nine games back. He's two games above the Pacers and six games above the Bucks. And, and, you know, as I look at this conference standings, isn't it great that they put everybody in the playoffs? Like, eliminate, oh, he is eliminated from the playoffs. In order to be eliminated from the playoffs, 
you had to be pretty son of a gun and bad. Like, not win 500. 38 and 43 got you eliminated from the playoffs. You realize that? Right. Well. Well, everybody else is in. I, uh, the San Antonio Spurs, cha-ching, in. Will they win the West? I know, honestly, I gotta be honest with you, Andrew, I, I don't really care. Because, like, I it's for me, it's LeBron or nothing. I'm not so much of an NBA, uh, I'm not so much of an NBA fan to the point where I root for teams as much as I like my players. <coughs> when it comes to the NBA, I like my players. Oh. And maybe that's because Pittsburgh doesn't have a pro team. You know, and obviously I like the Cavs. You know, I root You've for just the Cavs. insulted the Pirates. How? They're a pro team. I'm talking about and NBA pro team. And they're 7-1. I'm talking about the NBA. And the Pens won through two cups. I'm talking about an NBA pro team. Uh, you so know what? I, Angela, listen, when it comes to the <laughs> NBA... I root I'm more just, for my players. I'm but. just saying, the Cleveland Indians are 5-5. Five and five. Your Pittsburgh Pirates are 7-2. and two. Well, you know, I think I said this last show. Angela, is, is there any Pirate fan in Pittsburgh, really around the world, that actually expects them to continue this winning momentum? But, I think every, like I said last show, we're, we're just expecting... A crash and burn. I think most fans are just expecting a couple weeks just for them just to go flat again. But you realize, Usually they used to go to the All-Star break. Now it's just like, uh, any day now. You realize right now, if it ended right now, the Pirates would be playing the Mets for the penny. I know, but there's 162 games in this in this season. That's why fa fans know this, obviously. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's the problem. You know, the Pirates, the Pirates just play too many games. <laughs> that's really it. That was great. The, 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 that's they like, should stop now. now. Major League Baseball should just, like, go for three weeks and that's it. Hey, oh, did that happen to the NBA? The uh, LeBron, just, he just played too many games. He just played too many games. <laughs> they ran out of time. They didn't lose. But, like, it's for real. It's hard to put a sense of urgency into a team when there's 162 games and the Pirates, everyone knows what's going to happen. So the Pirates in Major League Baseball, this makes no rational sense whatsoever, I know, but they just need to stop playing after a first few months and I'll be well. They'll all trade. He'll trade them by the 4th of July. At this rate... He can get money from the whole team. He'll trade them all. You know, just, just when he does an interview, just looking at that face of his, he's just such a snake. You know what I mean? I, I just, I can't. The oh, guy, every time he's him. been in first place, he's traded everybody. I, I. That's why I'm going to watch North County Baseball on NCTV 45. North How's that? The How's alternative that to uh, pro baseball in Pittsburgh, North County Baseball. Yeah. That's what we're going to start advertising. Uh, Flaherty Field. Clarity failed. But I think that does it for today's show. Angelo, is there anything, do I dare ask you, is there anything else you want to add? I can only say one thing. Oh, God. What is it? Be an Irish Duke, root for Notre Dame, Duquesne, and the basketball player playoffs, root for the Celtics. Not the Cavs, right? No. What? They're technically our hometown team. No. Yeah, they are. You've got to stay in the state boundaries. I, I, no, I, no, no. I've come to the conclusion. No. LeBron has, you know what? i got to give him credit for one thing. He's forced me to root for the 76ers. Well, he might be joining them next year. That's a potential landing spot. Then what are you going to do? Then I'll probably go back to the Cavs. <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to go back that way. Listen, Cleveland's only, what, about an hour and 45 minutes from here? Philadelphia is, what, closer to six hours by default. They're the hometown team. No, that's not what they did when they put them on TV. Uh, I, uh, you, you, we're, this isn't going to make any progress. Maybe we'll save that for next show. Take the train. You could have dinner in the diner and then wake up and be at a 76ers game. Minus LeBron. I, 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 they're Philadelphia, though. They're the hated city. They're Pittsburgh's rival. They don't... 
Th that's why I ha- Just forget it. Th it's good. You're gonna make my money. Let's go pet! Let's go pet. Alright everybody, you all have a wonderful evening. A special thanks to the YMCA for caring about the Lawrence County community and providing funding for this program.